Helmsdale housing project came about after some 34 years of uh, no uh, affordable housing being built in the community area. Uh, consequently, we had a, uh, an outwith migration of young people and young families in particular, uh, around about four and a half to five percent year on year for the last 20 years. And the community council uh, had been lobbying for many years with local authorities, uh, housing associations to build affordable homes. We had the opportunity, it was hi highlighted and identified through an extensive community consultation some years ago, uh, back actually back in 2010, 2011, that, that there was a fiscal need for housing within the community. Consequently, we'd uh, undertaken some, some uh, housing needs analysis undertaken by Hound Small Communities Housing Trust, which indicated how many units and what size and what type and what year. We then submitted uh, an application to the Innovation Investment Fund with the Scottish Government and we were successful in an award of monies in late 2011. The community uh, were actually involved in that process through an extensive consultation to support that. Um, and the community also, and the school children might add, were supportive uh, and contributed towards the design and the location of where they should be built and even the naming of the, of the houses uh, and the street that they're on. The Helmsdale housing project is wholly owned by the community. Um, Everyone in the community has had a say, not just in the design and the location of it, uh, of where they're actually uh, situated, uh, but the, the community actually own uh, all uh, the four houses and the, and the three plots. Uh, but we, as a development trust, uh, Helmsdale and District Development Trust, hold that in perpetuity on, the, on their behalf. Once we received the funding from the Scottish Government's Innovation Investment Fund, um, it took us two years to raise the, the rest of the monies for, for the total project. We were conscious of not starting on site until all those project monies were actually in place. During the build process, we had one or two small um, delays, only of a couple of days or a matter of a week uh, on one or two items, but they were quickly resolved. And that was testament to the, uh, uh, the builders, MM Millers, who were absolutely fantastic. Other than that, the, the build went fairly smoothly. We completed uh, uh, on time and the residents and the tenants actually moved in two weeks before Christmas in 2014. My name is Fiona Munro and I work for Albin Housing Society and we're a registered social landlord working um, throughout the Highlands. We have 3,000 units which we own and manage in a large area and I work in the Asset and Investment Department. We started looking at potentially being involved in helping to fundraise as well as helping to procure the design team, work on the plans and deliver the project on site. So we were then very much on advising on the procurement of the design team, managing that process and general advice to them on the standards they should be building to and things like management and maintenance. I think the funding element of it was incredibly complex and incredibly tricky and it took a phenomenally long time to get together. Um, the bravery of the community in keeping going, putting together 17 different grants with all their different requirements and all their different conditions and then managing that process. And it was also a very refreshing experience because a board will challenge some of the, the ways that you work I and mean, you've worked with, with those assumptions for many years and it's good to be questioned and it's good to think about well maybe we should challenge some of these rules and so it's the balance between getting what you want and, and really having the faith and belief to push a project through but also for us in our role to keep all the funding bodies on board and think about the political picture and our relationships with our close partners. So the role of the development officer with Paul, he was able to understand from both sides what the issues were and reconcile us in the middle. The community were able to keep that going and they just had a sheer belief that the project would happen. And then you see the finished result and you see what it means for people and you realise absolutely it's worth it. One of the key benefits that I, I feel very strongly about is that in this fragile community we were uh, losing an awful lot of the population, young families were, were leaving 
and uh, partly because there was not sufficient uh, accommodation for them within the village. So these four houses have made a huge difference and they've actually increased the population of the school, for example. So the threat of the school closing, which was a very great threat, is now gone. And so I think that's a very, very important uh, uh, outcome of the housing project. Additional to that is, is, is also the community identifying at the outset its, 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 set of, its own set of priorities, which the development trust has turn those priorities into a business development plan and growth plan for the community and the community engaged with actively uh, and regularly uh, uh, on that but it's also about the empowerment that the community has, has, has learned uh, from, uh, from taking ownership of that piece of land to actually building the houses, to actually owning the houses. The, the four units that have been built that were wholly owned by, that are wholly owned by the community may not seem a lot in the grand scheme of things but the, the ripple effect that, that that has had throughout the community, it's not just for individual stroke families that have been helped. And uh, we will hopefully drop this fragile uh, name. Yeah, we'll lose the tag. We'll, we'll lose the tag. We'll lose yes. the tag. Yeah. Uh, considering when the project first got off the ground and Paul would ask people for advice about where to go, nearly everywhere you turn they said, oh no. Um, you'll never get that off the ground, it's far too difficult, we find it difficult enough, you'll never do it. Well, here we are, two years down the line, it's all been achieved, it's up and running, and um, it's absolutely wonderful. It just shows the tenacity of the community uh, and the resilience that, that they have, uh, and you know, the dogged determination to, to make things happen yeah. uh, themselves.